64. What are you talking about? What do you want? 20 to 1? You want 20 to 1? You go 20 to 1. Yes. But B? Here is a special announcement for the owner and rider of number two, Lily Law. Will you make your way to the parade ring as soon as possible? Anybody who wants to buy tickets and win the, ch the chance of winning £30 or the other prizes should buy them quickly, either from the stand or where the official badges or from the horse box. What the hell am I doing here? I could be doing other things, you know. Could be at the dogs. Acne. Dogs? Terry, this is where it's at. Your own county's set. You mark Phillips lot. Contacts, innit? Combine business with pleasure. I've got a smashing lance here I'm trying to unload. 1979 logbook. Only 14th hour on the clock. Not a trace of rust. Got a bomb with a chin, that's one I should think. Oh, I smell that affluence. You don't get that at Acne Dog Track. No. It's done. You're standing in it. Decorations for the next race, the adjacent Hans Maiden race, close in 10 minutes' time. Declarations for the next race, the adjacent Hans Maiden race, close in 10 minutes' time. And the runners for the open race will shortly be leaving the parade ring. Would the public please clear the court? That's my one. It's got a bent on it. So? Wouldn't say no to her either, as Alms. Lily Law? <laughs> Fancy that? Always with a name like that. You of all people. <laughs> I fancy it. No chance. No chance at all. Look at his legs. Yeah, look at his iron quarters. <laughs> what are you going on about his pins for? I want to stick a monster on his nose, not give it one. Yeah, stick a fiver on the other grape for me. Be advised, Terry. Stand on me. Lily Law. <laughs> There you go, seven quid on spring return. Twenty-eight pound for seven spring return to get number three oh one. Excuse me. There you go. Four to one. Four to one? He must have seen you coming. Some of the others added at seven to two. The horses are down at the start. Do it yourself. We'll Couple quid, yeah. Right form a line, just there, jockeys. Now just walk up slowly, slowly. Slowly on the line. They're under starters' orders, and they're off for the open race. And settling down, going to the first, Lily Law goes into the lead. And at the rear, spring return has started slowly. Lily Law clear in the lead. Phone bill, Lampton and Flying Station. I'm on my side. Going to the first, it's Lily Law. From Phone bill second and Flying Station. Oh, and at the rear, spring return has refused. Spring yeah. return, a refuser. The, the bugger's balked at the first. Lily Law goes clear, going to the second. And on the run in, it's Lily Law winning easily from Flying Stations and Phone bill. Here is the result of the open race. The one I fancy pissed it. That's well, always been your problem, Terry, isn't it? What else? Dithering about, chopping and changing. What's known in the psychiatric profession as a grasshopper mind. In the good old days, you could get treatment for it. Pelmanism. If you have a fancy, a feeling in your water, stick to it. But it was you who talked me out of it. Yeah, that's the point I'm trying to make, isn't it? You shouldn't have listened to me. You've got to be strong-willed in this world, Terry. Implacable, like me. Now, come on, twist me arm and take me for a drink. Listen, if you're going point to point in again, let me know. I'll arrange to be busy. <laughs> Hang about, Terry. We may have done our bread, but maybe it's only cast on the waters. Hey? Eh? Clock a geezer in the wind in the willow's waistcoat and the snappy felt hat over there. 
Says Watson Everett. Who? Watson Everett. Stroll on. Oh, come in, Terry. He's only one of your genuine NH trainers. He's not rubbish. Hey, that little bloke has got a couple of jumpers with him. The Honourable Jeremy Burnham Jones. He swallowed the user or something. What's a Jeremy Burnham Jones when it's at home? It's contact, isn't it, Terry? Only one of your bright and true blue jet set. Heavily into antique commemorative pottery. I'd forgotten he was also heavily into GGs. So what good's that going to do us? Because, Terry, as well as being heavily into GGs, I am not entirely disassociated with antique statue wear. Since when? Subsequent to a favour I did a geezer yesterday. <laughs> antique statue wear, you! Well, why not? <laughs> Look, is there anything you're not into? Yeah, that's one or two things. Still, you, you never know your luck. <laughs> <laughs> An honest opinion. A connoisseur's assessment. Me? You. What, what it's worth, you mean? Yeah. All right. Well, for a start, is it nicked? Terry. It's old, isn't it? Yeah, mid-19th century, yeah. Well, it's an ornament. It's a, a statue. It's a geezer. I don't think Arthur Negus could have nailed it better. It's China, Terry. Is it? He ain't got slant eyes. Not Chinese China. Not bamboo shoots and prawn ball China. Staffordshire China. Oh. A fine, unrecorded Staffordshire figure holding a book and resting his elbow on a pedestal. That is how your bona fide art world auctioneer will classify it. It's Milton. Milton who? Milton. False teeth merchant. The poet Milton. Paradise lost, paradise got back, all that. Go on, go on. Put a price on it. Yeah, but am I buying or selling? To the punter, what you are holding, Terry, is worth 80 quid. 95 top whack. Is it really? Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Handsome. Bet you wish you had 100. <laughs> Too gross. God blimey! Fakes! They are 100% genuine reproductions. Well, you're holding then, aren't you, son? All you need now is some punter to get rid of them for you. That is where my friend Jeremy Burnham Jones comes in. What, a geezer from Brighton who's into pottery and horses? Contacts, Terry. That is what life is all about. I've been on a blur to him. He does me a favour, I do him a favour in return. Oh, yeah? And what favour are you doing him? To be fair, Arthur, I mean, credit where credit's due, your average punter is not going to stand for it. Terry, your average punter is going to stand what he's told to stand for because your average punter is a mug. Yeah, all right, all right, I won't argue with that. Your average punter is a mug. But he's not a bleeding lunatic, is he? How come? Look, your average punter is not going to lob out 85 or 90 sods an antique Staffordshire statue that was manufactured by a factory full of Pakistanis round the back of Orient football ground, are they? Think not? No, Arthur. Highbury, maybe. Orient, no. Terry, I'll mark your card of your average punter for you. He goes into an antique shop, picks up a little piece of pottery. If he's got a sticker on its bottom saying 350, he is astute enough to know a piece of rubbish when it's put in front of him. Vodka and tonic. No, only light ales. Two light ales, then. If, contrary-wise, the sticker says 90 nicker, he knows enough about the subject to know a bargain when it's put in front of him. Hello, 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 says your Mr. Average, nice guy, punter. 90 nicker, this can't be rubbish. Ipso facto, we got a result, Terence. One pound 60. 288 times 90 is... No, 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 it's not all profit, Terry. They are genuine reproductions. Pakistani craftsmen or no Pakistani craftsmen? Oh, yeah. That'd have cost me six quid a piece. And his overheads? Travelling exes? Meals. Exactly. And what little I do come out on top with? I've got to split down the middle, haven't I? And Jeremy Burnham Watson's going to want a cup of coffee, isn't he? Sad but true. But life isn't just material possessions, Terry. Do you know what life is really all about? Contacts. Right. Brighton is Mecca for your antique tourist punter. Jeremy has friends at court. 
what I was thinking, what keeps going through my mind is, uh, while you're buzzing around all these antique merchants, what am I going to be doing? I'm not surprised they turned it in, you know. Your theatrical night, shut up, market lot. Turn what in? The Milton. London to Brighton, Brighton to London. Regular as clockwork. Before it was Elbow. What was Elbow? Brighton Bell. Champagne and kippers. They all did it. Johnny Gilbert, Ralphie Richardson, David Sexton. Uh, every morning of the week, we had Pullman cars then. They had vintage cars and all, didn't they? London to Brighton. I mean, I mean can, you, can you see Johnny Gilgood, Sir Johnny Gilgood, no less, with his light ale slopping around in his plastic beaker while he stuffs an individual fruit pie into his north and south? That's not on, is it, mate? What? Sitting here like this, he wouldn't stand for it. See, what I keep thinking is, why do you need the Heavy Brigade? Heavy Brigade? Yours truly. Who down there needs leaning on? Nobody. A little seaside trip for you, isn't it? Fresh air, all that. Put money on it. Much as you like, my son. You'll find you're on a loser. Yes, that was great. He worked well on the bridle over six furlongs. He'll be there in time for plumbing. Oh, he'll be all right in time for the race, all right. No fear on that score. Lincoln. Yes, Governor? Make sure he's done up properly. See, he's up. Right. I do that right enough. A rare 19th century commemorative Staffordshire equestrian figure you got there, Terry. Worth a bob or two, I can tell you that. Well, more than milk. What? Your pottery equestrian's a different class to your pottery poet, isn't he? I mean, that's really kosher. You're into the ton and half club there, I should say. Really? Yeah. Let's have a look. Rather more than that, I oh, think. Yes. Hello, Jeremy. How nice to see you again. Thank you. So this is the friend you were telling me about, Arthur? Yeah, Terry Mc... <coughs> Terence McCann. The Honourable Jeremy Burnham Jones. I'm uh, pleased to meet you. Hello, Terence. You like the archer? The what? Fred Archer, Mr. McCann, he rode over 2,750 winners. Six ledgers, five derbies, four oaks, 2,000 guineas four times, the 1,000 guineas twice. Greatest there was. We haven't heard of him. No, it's not up my street. No, no, it's not his strongest subject, the history of the turf, Jeremy. Now that, that's more like it, isn't it? What? Master McGrath, winner of the Brownlow, Starry's Brick and Douglas Cups. The only dog ever to win the Waterloo three times. How do the sport of kings? <laughs> How about queens, Jeremy? Royal Command was presented to Queen Victoria at court. <laughs> he will have his little joke. <laughs> and all the same, one hopes that Mr. McCann will prove rather better than useless when it comes to earning his keep. I want a word with you. Yeah, of course. Outside. Don't worry, Jeremy. Underneath all that, solid gold. All that glisters, Arthur. Exactly. Since when have I been on his payroll? You no, know, no, I was going to tell you, Terry, but I was just waiting for the, the opportune moment, you know. Like now? Yeah, well, look, as I explained to you, Jeremy is doing me a favour apropos to Milks, right? Yeah, all right, yeah. yeah and, and I, in return, and by courtesy of you, am doing him a favour back. What sort of favour? No, no, don't lose your bottle. Nothing big, nothing you haven't handled before. Sort of, um, watchdogging type of thing, you know. What sort of watchdogging? Well... Watch all sing, really. I mean, to be absolutely clinical. Me? Sleeping there? Leave it out. But Terry! No, 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 it's not nice, is it? What do you mean, it's not nice? Me kipping down with a bleeding nag. 
No, I'm sorry, mate, it's not on. <laughs> this is the countryside. This is your great outdoors. Look, you could be sitting behind a desk in a Soho club, breathing in all that ciggy smoke and all that rubbish, grappling with legless marauders from Man United's far-flung legions. Having aggro. This is Shangri-La. <laughs> No, Arthur, it's not on. Almost chasers. No, Arthur. Well, if you won't do it, Patrick, there's always them that will. Yeah, well, you better get hold of them. Listen, wouldn't be the first time that a stable lass has stood guard all night lying down with a racehorse. Uh, a bird? Yeah. The mind boggles, doesn't it? I mean, what sort of scruffy scrubber have you got to get who's going to sleep with a horse in a stable, eh? Hey? Hello. I'm Jocelyn Maxwell Saunders. Oh, I'm Arthur Edward Daly. You must be the good Samaritan who's volunteered to keep a watchful eye on this chap. Um, well, no, no actually. No, it's, uh, it's me. Terry McCann. Oh, hello. It really is awfully kind of you. I'm silly. Any friend of Arthur? We're awfully grateful, Pell and I. Pell's his stable name. I'm riding him next week. I'm Rita. I was going to get landed with a job of spending me nights in there, so you've done me a right good favour. I've given up all over getting any beauty sleep. Yeah, well... Your need is great. Any road. If there's anything I can do for you, you only have to ask. No, I'll uh, do my utmost not to be a bother. You're a tough you are. God, dear old Lord. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Oh. Oh. do that again. I mean, why couldn't you knock? I didn't like to knock. I thought you might have had your head down. Only I fetched you a cup of cocoa. Oh, Tar. Do you take sugar? No, nah, no. Nah. Oh, I thought you would. You look as if you do. Only you've put three spoonfuls in. Well, I won't stir it then, eh? <laughs> Nothing else you want? No, no. Oh. Right. Well, I'll say good night then, Terry. OK. Good night, then, Terry. Work day for day, Rita. As soon as you can, let's have them tacked up early. Morning, Terry. Have a nice night. Terrific. Oi, Paddy. Yes, Patrick. I want to wash him a shave. Well, you're easily taken care of. There's a standpipe right behind me. Well, no hot water. No hot water. How do you shave, then? Electric razor. Well, that's what I got. Where'd you plug it in? I didn't plug it in. Works on a battery. <laughs> morning. Oh, morning, Joss. Morning. Morning. 
Yeah, uh, any chance of a cup of tea or something? Oh, there was a cup of tea for them that was up in time for it, but uh, there'll be nothing there till after the gallops. What, no breakfast? Morning, Milton's. Don't make it obvious, but if you look to your right, I keep seeing something glint in those trees. Can't see anything? No, you're right, it's gone. Probably not important. No, maybe not. There's possibly kids from the village fooling around. It's a bit early in the day for kids, isn't it? Anyway, they're always on the go, aren't they? Always dodging about. That's the third time I've seen something in the same place in the last ten minutes. Do you think someone's trying to knob off hell? What do you think? All things are possible, as the poet said. What poet? Milton? Didn't think you ought to stroll up there and take a look? No, no, no. No, if he sees me coming, he'll just leg it somewhere else, won't he? He'll also know I know where he is. No. Nope. Always allow the enemy to believe he's two moves ahead, right? But always be one move ahead of him. Who said that? Certainly not Milton. Wellington at Waterloo? No. Alexander at Illyria? No. George C. Scott. Yeah. Give him a rub over. Let him down, will you? Hey, I'll give you odds you've never done a day's work like this before. Hmm? Being a bodyguard to a GG. <laughs> I spent a fortnight once, before Christmas, being nursemaid to a load of residents of a turkey farm. Oh. They're not very much alike, though, I wouldn't think. You know, turkeys and, and racehorses. You'd be surprised, you know. Yeah. I mean, once they're boned and rolled, you know, sage and onion stuffing, of course, and lashings of thick brown gravy, smashing. Hey, listen. You're not one of them heathens that eats horse flesh, are you? Oh, I get it. It's a joke. Yeah. Roast racehorse. <laughs> it's very good. <laughs> Did you hear that, huh? Roast race horse. <laughs> 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 oh my god, Rita, no, no, Rita! Get out, you diglo! Get out! Sorry, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> god, you're a terrible man. <laughs> Right, what's on the menu then? Uh, what day is it? Thursday, isn't it? Oh, it's the Thursday already. Oh, in that case, it'll be, um, one, two, three, one, three, one, three, one, beef bourguignon. Hey, beef bourguignon. You see, Thursday is Joss's day to put the chef's hat on. Now, if it was Rita's day, it'd be egg and chips. It was egg and chips yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I must say, I prefer the beef bourguignon. You're supposed to like my egg and chips. I have nothing against egg and chips in principle, but you see, beef bourguignon has got more protein. <laughs> have you got a minute, Langton? Oh, I'm totally committed to the washing up going. Oh, yeah, it looks like it. Well, if you've finished, Rita, shoot across and give Joss a hand in the tap room. I'm going down to the village. <laughs> Here, Paddy. Patrick, your honour. Have you seen this geezer who's created a little fuss? Oh, the Phantom Nobbler. Yeah, I've seen somebody a time or two up in them woods. Is that what you think it is? Somebody trying to nobble the Honourable's Gigi? Well, he's hardly bird watching up there. And listen, there's a rumour going around someone's trying to get at the horse. And Jeremy would lose a few bob, right? If his horse was got there? Yeah, well, he loses prize money, 600 quid, first past the post. 
Six hundred? Yeah. Oh, dear, oh, Lord, I've seen more in the pontoon kitty at the Fulham Conservative Club. Oh, yeah, but there's a cut glass decanter goes with it. Really? Must be hoping to make a killing with the bookies, then, eh? No, you won't do that. Why not? Well, you see, you'll start off as a red-hot favourite, way out odds on. Is it not worth a bet? That much of certainty? Yeah, sure thing. All he has to do is to turn up a plummick on the day, and he's as good as past the post. And he'll turn up all right, fit as a fiddle. We've got you to see to that. What did you say this was? Hmm? Oh, it's beef bourguignon. It's French. It's horrible. What? Hey, that's not... That's not beef bourguignon you've got there, Patrick. Where'd you get that from? Got a pan over there. Oh, that, that explains it. Explains what? Well, you see, your beef bourguignon is in the oven, and what you've got there is a special diet that I was heating up for the three-year-old. Horse food? But well, what's wrong with that? I'm eating horse food. Listen, there's nothing wrong with the food we give the horses. There's nothing in there you couldn't eat yourself. You sure of that? Sure, I'm sure. Mix it up myself personally. It's got oats and it's got bran and it's... Well, there's just one little problem that you've got there, Patrick. Go on. But see, the three-year-old is on a diet for constipation and I put some jollop in there to give the horse the, the trots. So if I was you, I'd keep me plimsolls on for the rest of the day. You know what I mean? You can't have out, Terry. If it were humanly possible, you could. But I have given my word to Jeremy. But in his circle, your word is thingy, isn't it? You know, sacrosanct. I've eaten horse food! During the war, we ate all sorts of things. We ate whales, even the odd snook. No, I'm not spending another night with that horse. It farts. We're none of us perfect, Terry. Oh, oh and that silly cow, she's after me. Yeah? Yeah. She only soaked all my clothes, didn't she? Really? Oh, well, you seem to be getting some fringe benefits out of it all, don't you? Well, I'm not certain I haven't got a little visitor either. If you've got fleas, you haven't got them from the horse. And don't go giving them to the horse. Or questions to be asked in the house. You think you've got problems. You should be where I am. Well, I am where you are. Not of this immediate moment, you nerd. I mean, in a hot seat, wearing out shoe leather, trying to knock out milts. Now, if I'd been asked to keep in a proper stable with a derby runner or something, Plumwick Pelmet, leave me out. Milton? Brighton? Well, I thought they'd have gone a bomb with your Yankee tourist punters. But they're all, they're all into royalty. Got no literary heritage they can call their own. All they want is pottery kings and queens. She's a pigeon fancier. What? The queen. A pigeon fancier. Hard to believe, really, isn't it? <laughs> no, I used to win a few fags with that in the scrubs. Used to carry around a clipping from tidbits. What have pigeons got to do with it? I'm talking about American literature before your present 20th century. It's Mark Twain, Moby Dick bloke, Uncle Tom's Cabin. And what's that one about the Red Indian with a short back and sides? What's his name? Geronimo? No, 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 no. Um, all guys up, though. Last of the Imini. Uh, My Higgins. Oh, she's got class. Here yeah, she has, as it happens. Really? Eh? Should see her at the gallops. Firm young thighs clasped against the horse's flanks, holding it back. You didn't get that bit of purple prose out of tidbits. You haven't been giving it one, have you? Nah, all I get from her is double blanks. It's that other silly moo I'm fighting off, trying to buy my body with mugs of cocoa. You could travel further and fare worse, Terry. <laughs> well, she must have better manners in the kit than your four-legged friend. I'll leave it out, Arthur. Oh, that'll be one for your memoirs, Terry. You'll get a result there. <laughs> oh, well, press on. I might have recourse to going back to town. England? Yeah, London, yeah. I've been considering the feasibility. I mean, the milk's not doing the hot cakes act down here. I might just well chase my contacts up west. Well, it suits me. I've had a belly full of this. Oh, no, 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 not you. I have given Jeremy my word that you will see this job through. Arthur. And I am a man of my word. And you are a man of my word, too. Anyway, I'll keep in touch. Oh, she wants you.
be the Coco Queen. something. she lead from the start, and all the rest of the material here will be the back of a bomb. <laughs> Mr. McCann! Yeah, well, tell off, Paddy, mate. I'll see you, eh? Look after yourself. God bless, Patrick. Hey, keep taking the horse tablets. <laughs> Come on. It's ten o'clock already. I want to get in there and settle down a couple of hours before the off. Let him down just before you see the steward. Where the hell's Rita got to? Hey, up. Do you want to have the time on you, Terry? Yes, thanks. Would you mind telling me? I've got a watch, but I haven't got it on. Just gone 12. It's at the Mender's. Getting mended. Yeah, you on your own? Uh, you waiting for somebody? Yeah, something like that. It's, haven't you got things to do? Joss will see her into the stable. She doesn't run until the 2.15. Only if you are on your own. I'm on my own. So I'll wait for the gates to open. You could buy me a drink. Or on the other hand, I could buy you a drink. <laughs> Sorry, Rick. Got to see a man about us. See you later. Be lucky. Never another job like that one. Hello, young lover. Not playing gooseberry, am I? Open the boot. Look at that. Cool. That's a bit tawdry, isn't it? Stone me, that's it. Pardon? Geezer who tried to bonfire me. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the summit. We hope you have an enjoyable 
All right, what's up? Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Yes, go on, you dare. And I'll do more than say of something. I'll have you put away again, my lad. Hold thy tongue, woman. Thou art shapen in wickedness, and in sin hath thy mother conceived thee. Build up! Is that a friend of yours? He's no friend of mine. It's round a bleeding twist. I know. I must have been off mine when I married that daft, dozy sod. Generation of vipers! Who hath warned thee from the wrath to come? Shut your gob! Can't you leave me alone? Can't you let me live my life? I wouldn't care, but I've been separated from him two years. We've been divorced ten months. I knew it was you. I knew all along, only you tried to give myself. I've got a cold order on him from a listing. You know you suffer for it in the long run. Why carry on? Let us do evil that good may come. You're not right in the bloody head. He follows me round the country. Had a right good living job at a riding stables near Ebden Bridge, run by a married gentleman with a son at university, a Rotarian who never laid a finger on me, never even looked at me, and this stupid, senseless article broke three of his ribs. What do you think you'll get for this lot, bloody arson? <laughs> you wouldn't credit this. But he was as right as rain until one Sunday morning when a couple of religious maniacs kept him talking on the doorstep. <laughs> you're not... You're not right in the bloody head! Well, as the man said, it takes all sorts. Very astutely put, my son. But if we're going to stand here philosophising all afternoon, we're not going to earn our wages, are we? Come on. Extras to declare? No extras. Allowance three pounds. Claiming three pounds. And it just. Go and get a cup of tea. Next! After the steward's inquiry, the placing to be at all. And here are the two dividends for the first race for a 10 pence stay. A win on all number eight, stays 54 pence. Turn one ton. Put yourself about. See what you can get. Hundred? Yeah. It's going to be no price, is it? It's bound to be odds on. Mackerel will catch a sprat then, isn't it? Look, I have it from the horse's mouth. It's the biggest certainty since a tortoise wallop the air. And catching a sprat's better than bugger all. Oh, come on, Jello. What's your last servant dial? Enlarged arteries. <laughs> Excuse me. Look. Sorry. Captain Hill. Come on Come on Here we are. Here you go. Yes, sunshine. 100 quid permit. 120 permit. 120 permit. Ticket 734. 734. 
Number six, Julie Delight, has now joined the other guy at the start, so they will shortly be coming under Star Wars. Up. There you go. Five to one on. Five to one on? Under a nigger to twenty. Is that the best you could get? Yes. Do it yourself. Nah, never do odds on shots. Well, so I walk away with twenty quid. That can't be bad. Minus tax. Oh, yeah. No, I never have done odds ons. In any case. They'll soon be calling the line. In any case, what, Terry? Make the line, please. In any case, what, Terry? If Pelmet is such a good thing, how come I saw your oppo, Jeremy, putting all his dough on the second favourite, Linda's lunch? Linda's lunch? Yeah, six to one, not a bad price, that, is it? Seated his rider. She got off. Come on, Linda's horse. Come on, my beauty. What you want about? Go on, my son. Kick her on. Continuing their run for the four. Linda's lunch. I never fancied that pelmet anyway. Even before I saw his little chick putting all his loot on a second favourite. Just never fancied it. Why not? Feeling in me water. You might have told me. What for? Wouldn't have done any good, would it? Your what's name, ain't you? <laughs> Implacable. <laughs> Here's another thing. Why? All that stuff you were giving me before the off about it being the greatest racing certainty since I talked the swallow up the air. Well, what about it? <laughs> Historically inaccurate, isn't it? Before the start of that race, the air was odds on favourite, wasn't it? <laughs> Amazing. Who do you think you are? Bleeding Aesop? <laughs> oh, dear. Oi! Jeremy, you bastard. You had that race rigged. Arthur, as if I would. Jostin's foot slipped out of the iron, that's all. Leave it out. She took a dive. I had in me bins. You might have rode me in. You did owe me a favour. I lent you Terry. Well, I would have helped you, but one has to be discreet if one wants to keep the odds out on the second favourite. How'd you get that bird to sling it, eh? Break her arm or something. Hello, darling. Hello, darling. Oh dear, oh dear, Terry. What is it all about, eh? Contacts, innit? Sorry I couldn't help you push the Miltons, Arthur. Give us a ring if ever I can give you any help again. No, 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 Terry. Yeah, go on. There's a copper. No, I never had her card marked as being dodgy, I must say. And him? Thought he was definitely bent. He was bent. Oh, yeah. Bent crooked? I thought he was bent peculiar, you know. Well, he didn't study the form, Terry, did we? Ah, uh, and your favourite finished well down the field, didn't he? What though the field be lost, all is not lost. The unconquerable will, the study of revenge, etc., uh, etc. Et Milton? The lad himself. Neil Desperandum, that's what I think he's trying to tell us, Terry. Cop that. It's a paintbrush. That is your starter for ten. This is a pot of blue paint, this is a pot of white paint. I want them all painted. Blue shirts, blue breeches, white socks, nice pair of boots. Do what? I have another contact in commemorative pottery. No, 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 be honest. I've got a mate who's got a souvenir shop not far from Stamford Bridge. I'll stand a loss, but he'll knock them out for me as Chelsea footballers. Leave it out. You can't do that. He's a famous antique poet. He's got a book in his hand. F.A.M. book, isn't it? But he's wearing a cloak. Well, paint it. Stick a number on the back. Don't argue with me, Terry. Exercise your artistic talents. Here. You have the blue. 
Here's another one for you. Eyeless in Gaza at a mill with slaves. Samson Agoniestes. I've got one for you. Oh? When the ball hit the back of the net, I was over the moon, Brian. <laughs> Kevin Keegan. <laughs> I think you're an inside forward, my son. Thank you.